This is a debrief of task three from Applied Management Accounting Sample Assessment 2. Let's have a look at the information they've given us. Why Limited has introduced flexible budgeting. The assumptions used in the budget were that sales and materials are both variable. A revised budget at an activity level of 8,000 units showed the labour cost to be 69,400. Heat, light and power is a stepped cost increasing every 7,000 units and production overhead is a fixed cost. So we need to complete Y Limited's flex budget for September using minus signs to indicate any adverse variances. So you need to pay attention to the instructions provided in the question here because this question would be marked by a computer and if you use brackets instead of minus signs then the computer will just think that you're wrong and not give you your mark. Also we need to answer to the nearest pound so again, you need to make sure you follow the instructions so that the computer gives you your marks. So what have we been provided then? We can see that we've been provided with the original budget where we had planned activity of 7,500 units. And then we've also been provided with the actual. But what happened is that we produced more than planned. You know, we actually made 9,000 units more than 7,500 units. So what are we going to do now? We need to apply this flex budget. And the reason we're doing that is because if we look at our materials cost, we'll see, look, we've got 71,000 here and we originally planned to make 52,000. And that looks really bad, doesn't it? Yeah, we spent a lot more than we planned, but that's because we're not really comparing like with like. Of course, we would spend more on materials because we made more than planned. And if you make more, we're going to spend more on materials aren't we that, that that's that's logical so it means that we can't really compare the 71,000 with the 52,000 effectively we're not really comparing like with like so what are we going to do then well that's the purpose of our flexed budget what we need to do is flex the original budget to take into account that we actually made 9,000 units rather than 7,500 so we need to do that for every line of the budget to take into account the actual activity level. And then when we compare, we'll be focusing on whether we've really spent more or less than we should have, because we would expect all of the costs to be higher than the original budget because we did more. So we need to be aware that for each of the lines in the budget, that the cost behavior may be a little bit different. And we've been given a hint about that already, haven't we? Because it tells us that we've got variable costs, we've got stepped costs, we've got fixed costs. So we, we have different ways of the cost behaving and therefore we need to treat them all separately. So uh, let's have a look first of all at, at sales. The text tells us that sales are variable. So because of that, we can simply flex the sales by dividing the budgeted sales by 7,500 and then multiplying by 9,000. So if we take the 176,250, divide by 7,500, multiply by 9,000, that gives us a flexed figure of 211,500. Okay, so let's clarify. That's the 176,250. And then we are multiplying by 7,000, sorry, multiplying by 9,000 and dividing by 7,500. So we're just flexing the cost according to the actual activity. So now that we have that, that would be our expected sales figure, but we can see that actual sales were higher than that. You know, we can see this, we actually sold 23,450. So we have a variance here of 21,950, and that's a favorable variance. So we're putting that as a positive number because for some reason we were able to sell at a higher price as well as increasing the volume. So that, that's, that's really good. That's very positive, isn't it? Then what about our materials? 
So again, this tells us it's a variable cost. So perhaps let's remind ourselves of the different types of, of cost structure and behavior. So if we do a little graph here, so if we have our number of units uh, on the horizontal axis and then the cost on the vertical axis. So if we have a simple variable cost, then if we don't make anything, then it's going to cost us nothing. So we have our observation there and we're just going to have a, a straight line because for every one extra unit we make, we're going to have one more cost. Okay, so we just keep on increasing it. One more unit, one more cost. One more unit, one more cost. So a nice straight line. So that, that's what was happening with sales, and that's what's happening with materials as well. So for our materials, we want to take our 52,500, which was the budget, and again, multiply by 9,000 divided by 7,500, and that's going to give us 63,000 as our flexed budget. But we can see that the actual cost was higher than that. We spent more than planned. And not, not just because we spent more or because we made more, but yeah, compared with the flex budget, we still spent more money. You know, we still spent £8,090 more than the flex budget. So that, that's our variance. Now, what about labour? So for labour, they've told us that when we plan to make 7,500, we have a cost of 65,400. But when we make 8,000, we've got a different cost. So what we need to understand here now, well, well, how does this cost behave? Now, one way for us to think about this okay, for our, our labour, well, what is the cost per unit? So when we have activity of 7,500, yeah, so we can take the 65,400 cost and divide by the 7,500 units. And, and what do we get? We get £8.72. So it costs £8.72 in labour costs for every unit we make. But what about for the other observation? So we have a cost of 69,400 divided by 8,000 units. So in this case, we have a cost per unit of £8.67. So we don't have the same cost per unit for the for different activity levels. Okay? So that means it's not a variable cost. And so it just can't be, because if it was a variable cost, we'd have the same cost per unit. It wouldn't matter what activity we had. But because we have different costs per unit, then we, we, we can't have a, a variable cost. So in this case, it's more likely to be semi-variable. So let, let's just remind ourselves what that looks like. So here's our graph. Again, units on the horizontal axis and the cost on the vertical axis. So because it's semi-variable, it means that there's likely to be some sort of fixed element. So it doesn't matter how many we make, there's going to be a fixed cost, but there are also a variable element as well. So again, we will have a, a straight line here, but the straight line doesn't start at the origin because there is a fixed and a variable element to the cost. So how are we going to work that out? Well, what we need to do is, is work out from the two observations, what is the fixed amount and what is the variable amount? Now, there is a formula for this. We know that our total cost equals the fixed cost plus the variable cost per unit multiplied by the number of units. Okay, so yes, we've got the fixed cost plus the variable cost, and the variable cost depends on the number of units we produced. So we have two observations for this. So in the original budget, we have a total cost of 65,400, and that's going to be made up of our fixed cost plus our variable cost multiplied by the 7,500 units. And then in our second observation, we've got a cost of 69,400. And again, that's our fixed cost plus our variable cost per unit multiplied by 8,000 units. So just to make this clear, I'm going to call one of these equations, equation one and equation two. And what we need to do is manipulate these two equations to find out what the, the two unknown variables are. 
So what I'm going to do then, let's take equation 2 and take away equation 1 from it. So if, if we do that, so that means 69,400 minus 65,400, that's going to be 4,000. And then fixed cost minus fixed cost, well, that's going to be zero. And then we'll be left over on the right hand side here, this is just 500 of the variable cost. So on that basis, we can work out then, can't we, that 4,000 divided by 500 will be our variable cost. So that's going to be eight pounds per unit. So now that we have that figure, we know the variable cost is eight, we can now substitute that into one of our two equations at the beginning to work out our fixed cost. It doesn't really matter which one you choose, you can either put it into equation one or equation two, it doesn't really matter. So let's put it into equation one. So we know that uh, 65,400 equals our fixed cost plus, and now we know it's going to be eight pounds multiplied by 7,500. So eight multiplied by 7,500 is, is 60,000. So we know that 65,400 equals our fixed cost plus 60,000. And that means our fixed cost must be 5,400. So now we know that, you know, we know our variable cost is 8,000, our fixed cost is 5,400. We can work out now if we have our actual output of 9,000, you know, we can work out our, our new total cost, can't we? Okay. So we know that our total cost will be 5,400 and we add on to that 8 pounds multiplied by 9,000. And that gives us a total of 77,400. Okay. So that, that's our flexed cost for labor. Now, what was the actual cost? So it was actually 74,560. So that means we managed to spend less than the flexed budget. So we have a favorable variance of 2,840 here. Okay, next then, let's move on to our heat, light and power, where it tells us that we have a stepped cost increasing every 7,000 units. So if we make up to 7,000 units, there will be a cost. And then if we make between 7,001 and 14,000 units, there will be another cost. Okay, so we have our, our different steps. So again, if we show this graphically, yeah, up to 7,000 units, we will have a particular cost. And then for the next 7,000 units, so up to 14,000, we will have a different cost. And then if we carry on if up to 21,000, there'll be a different cost. So what do we have then? Well, so for 7,500, that's our, our first observation for our budget, isn't it? So we would have a cost of 24,000. And then we want to know for 9,000, well, that's going to be in the same step, isn't it? So that means we still have 24,000 as our expected cost here because we're in the same step. But we can see that our actual cost is 27,500, which means that we spent 3,500 more than expected. That's a, an adverse variance. And then for our production overhead, it just says it's a fixed cost. So we just put in the same 28,000. And again, notice we spent more than that. So yeah, we have an adverse bear, it's a negative number of 6,500. So uh, in the exam software, so that we notice that look, there's a zero here. So that, that would be automatically calculated as you put the figures in. So yeah, we'd have a total here of 192,400 for our total costs. And, and we can see that overall, yeah, we spent 15,250 more than that. Now, when we take our total costs and deduct it from our sales, that means we can work out what our operating profit is as well. So we're expecting 19,100 as our profit, but we actually made a profit of 25,800. So that means we have a variance of 6,700. 
Uh, and what's the cause of that? Because even though we've spent more money on making these products, we managed to sell them for a much higher price. So overall, we've done quite a good job here. The next part of the question then in part B, it asks us identify which three of the following are limitations of flexible budgeting. So the first one, it focuses only on overhead costs. Well, no, that's not right, is it? Because we can see that in our, our question we had earlier, if we looked at materials, which is a direct cost. So that, that's not true. Um, next thing, it can be difficult to split cost into their fixed and variable elements. Well, that's what we did here, isn't it? So yeah, it can be difficult to do that. So yeah, we can say that's one of the true statements. The next one, it assumes fixed costs are fixed irrespective of the output level. Um, and well, yes, it does, doesn't it? That's what we've done here. We've got the, the fixed cost are 28,000 and it, it's 28,000 for the flex budget. Um, but yeah, so that is an assumption of the system, but we know that that's not necessarily a valid assumption uh, because you know, fixed costs may change. You know, they may change with inflation. You know, they may not change because of the output level, but they may change with other things. Um, so yes, yeah, so, but the, the overall assumption is that they, they will stay fixed. It, does, it doesn't really matter what happens. Uh, the next statement then, it provides a like-for-like -like comparison based on the actual level of output. Um, so it, it, it does provide that like for like comparison, doesn't it? Because we're trying to compare these two figures using the same level of, of output. But this is for a flexed budget. But our question is asking about a flexible budget. And in a flexible budget, we could have different activity levels to find out, well, what if we make 8,000? What if we make 10,000? What if we make whatever? So with a flexible budget, uh, we won't necessarily have that like-for-like -like comparison. So yeah, that statement is not correct. The next statement assumes all costs must start from a zero base. Well, no, it, it, it doesn't do that because there may be fixed costs. And then last one, it assumes all variable costs are linear, irrespective of the output level. Well, it, it, it does do that, doesn't it? If we go back to our graphs, yeah, we have some straight lines included in there. So we've got this linear arrangement here. We've got this linear arrangement here. But again, that may not be true because if we expand our units, it could be that we get some discounts from our suppliers. So it could be that the reality is that it may tail off. But you know, in our, our system, we're, we're just going to assume that we can flex in a linear way. So yeah, those are the three correct statements there. Now let's move on to the next part of the question. So part C, so complete the following statement about flexible budgeting. And notice flexible, not flexed. So flexible budgeting is primarily used for, and our choices there, you can see either planning, control, or decision making. Yeah. Well, our plan was the original budget. So yeah, it, the flexible budget isn't part of our plan, uh, but it is for control. Because having flexed our budget, we can now work out our variances and we can start to investigate those variances. So yeah, this is primarily used for control. And then part D, complete the following statements. A system which operates by comparing budgeted results against forecast well, the key word here is forecast because a forecast is looking into the future, isn't it? So that would be a feed forward system. And then the second one, a system which compares the actual historical results with a budget. Well, that's looking into the past. So that's going to be a feedback system.